to introduce our, uh, for our first speaker um, back to the stage. Um, so um, I'd like to invite Dan Gordon to join us. Uh, Dan is the technology evangelist for Traceable AI. So Dan, welcome and, and uh, thank you for joining us today. Thank you. Thank you. I'm honored to be here. So there's uh, Dan's screen and I will exit stage left. Uh, floor is yours, Dan. Thanks, Carl. All right. Well, thank you, uh, everyone, for, for joining. Uh, my name is Dan Gordon, as Carl mentioned, technical evangelist at Traceable AI. Uh, I've been a developer, security operations, security architect, product manager for several DevOps products. Um, I've been pushing DevOps since its inception around 2008, 2009, helped put GitLab on the map, and have my enthusiasm has grown from DevOps to uh, to evangelizing really DevSecOps because that's that's really the next evolution, the next level of maturity as, as more organizations adopt DevOps. Uh, and how does that relate to all this? Well, let, let's focus in on the security part uh, and what we're going to talk about today, which is securing your APIs and apps uh, in this new landscape where we're developing faster, uh, where we are um, uh, we're, we're using different technologies, uh, and it's and, and let's take a look at what's changing and, and what we need to think about differently. So, it's I don't need to tell this crowd, uh, you know, in uh, in modern applications are driven by APIs. We all know that, and APIs are the heart of innovation, um, and they've enabled us to go from monoliths to flexible, dynamic, ever-evolving solutions. Um, for sure, APIs are powering the modern economy. We all know this, but not everybody outside of this meeting, uh, out of this uh, set of uh, folks knows this. Um, development has adopted APIs voraciously, but in general, security has yet to catch up. So the current state of most application security is quite frankly out of date. Uh, today's app, app security solutions are built for, for yesterday's technology. Solutions like WAFs and RASPs are designed for a time when our application architectures were simpler. Web clients talk mostly exclusively to the front end servers. HTTP was the main protocol. You could secure mainly with perimeter security uh, and attacks uh, reflected that. Um, and you know, we it was a simpler web traffic, less protocols. Uh, so we had and still have, you know, to contend with things like cross-site scripting, SQL injection, buffer overflows. And while legacy solutions uh, have somewhat helped us to manage these attacks today, we still suffer from those. Um, but on top of that, that's just not the world that we operate in anymore. On top of that, as we all know, uh, right, we're, we're in the new cloud native microservices, API driven application architectures where tens or potentially hundreds of microservices make up an application. And there's now potentially tens or hundreds of APIs or even thousands of API endpoints that are part of that application as well. And those APIs are oftentimes unique for each of those services that you're communicating with, written with service-specific logic by different people who implemented who knows what level of security. All right, so these APIs are introducing a whole new attack surface. Uh, and WAFs and RASPs, our older technologies for solving these application security problems, fall short on protecting uh, this attack surface because they don't really understand the API layer. So there are some more advanced uh, uh, WAFs, for example, that uh, may use a little bit of ML to do a little bit more uh, state management, uh, but they cannot catch uh, and, and at the speed catch the kinds of new attacks that are happening like broken object level authorization where somebody who is properly authenticated may be able to find a hole in authorization and actually get something that they shouldn't get out of an API. Uh, newer logic attacks like mass assignment where uh, we're giving out too much data um, uh, or we're, well, we're putting back too much data, excessive data exposure. Uh, so. We have solutions somewhat for what OWASP to, uh, coined the top 10 really web vulnerabilities. We still need to protect from those. But now we've also got the OWASP API top 10 list. Uh, and uh, you know, to catch these threats, to protect against them, you need user tracking. You need application context. Uh, and uh, you know, this is still a challenge. We are still figuring out how to do this, uh, the, the industry in general, how to adopt this. Uh, if you look at the headlines in the last several years, 
you can see that companies like Apple and T-Mobile multiple times, Uber, Twitter, Facebook, Shopify, Starbucks, you name it, have all been burnt by API uh, related attacks. So I don't like fear mongering, but these are real headlines. We need to be aware of what's happening out there. And you can bet that these organizations had great security teams and they had the latest of WAFs and RAFs installed, right? This quote is crazy, I think, right? But it's true. 91% of organizations had an API security incident last year, so 2020, um, uh, from a security magazine survey. And Gartner, a while ago, uh, and has re reconfirmed this, predicted that by 2022, so next year, they expect API attacks to become the most frequent attack vector for data breaches, right? So there's there's a situation going on and we need to do something more about it. What we're doing is not enough, clearly. So how, why is this happening? Let's take a look at one, in, uh, one instance, um, a situation that happened at Uber. Normal, tra uh, normal traffic, uh, a user would basically uh, authenticate properly, joining in this situation what was a referral API so they could get a new user ID created. That would get them passed back to them was expected by the API is that the uh, the client would then take that ID and then make a request back to the server to get the full user object um, so that they could pull the information out that they needed to put into the consent details screen. So when that happened, the full J the JSON user ID would get, or the full JSON object would get passed back that had the user ID, but also other information. And the expectation is that the client will behave properly filter out just the data that it needs and that it should have access to, and then use that and throw away the rest. But in the attack scenario, the bad actor authenticates, but then makes an API call with a different user's details, user ID, and the JSON, the backend doesn't do a check. So this is a bad authorization, this is Bola, and then sends back the JSON object of a different user. Now, because of mass assignment, the attacker has all of the data from a different user, including their PII. Now, what happened here? The attacker was able to get PII records, authentication tokens, and had ability to get full account takeover. As I mentioned, this came from broken object level authorization. Um, the API in the back end didn't make sure that the user that was requesting an object had the correct authorization to get that object paired with and this is a usual typical and dangerous pair excessive data exposure where they, the expectation was that the client would do the proper filtering and that they could hand the whole object over uh, to the client uh, and this led to this attack so really what what comes from this if you if you think about it step back for a second um, this is why API attacks are different. Um, they're preying on the logic. If you think about this, the URLs that went by, the signatures, what, what the WAFs and RAFs might be looking at, right? Those all are normal. They, they match a pattern that fits, it's proper. It's really when you start looking at the state of the communication and looking further out and wider about what's the normal baseline behavior that, that you can catch these types of things. Um, and so, a new generation of application architectures has brought this new generation of attacks. And so really what we're saying is we need a new generation of application security. Call it third gen. I don't like the term next gen because there's always a next something. Um, but really we need something uh, that understands APIs, that's API centric. The solution needs to be able to inventory the APIs, reverse engineer them, understand the specifications, understand the parameters and how they get used look at the baselines, uh, understand which APIs are risky and which are not, which are authenticated, which are handling sensitive data, and which are not, um, because APIs are really where attacks are happening nowadays. Not that they can't happen at other layers, but they are actually also happening now uh, very frequently, as we uh, talked about already, at the API layer. The solution needs to be learning. Why? Well, because rule-based solutions, which, let's face it, never really were that great, um, always required a lot of maintenance. But now with DevOps and CI CD and, and microservices and the ability to just move the application forward in bits and pieces constantly, we're under constant change. So something that's not learning constantly 
is not going to be able to keep up with new attacks, new software changes, new API changes, et cetera. A solution that is going to solve these problems needs to understand data flow and risk. Now, the reason is because data is no longer as it used to be handed from one trusted server to another and then done. Now your data may be passed from microservice to microservice, perhaps tens or hundreds of them uh, in different forms. And so there's like now a trust chain that we have to understand. We have to understand who's who's passing the data to whom um, and, and what are the varying levels of protection along that pathway? When does it go external, for example? Um, and, and a solution that, that we're talking about here needs to also uh, work at the speed of DevOps so that we can have true DevSecOps. And see, I told you I'd bring that back in, right? Where we need to get to is extending, uh, and this is not a new concept, the idea that we're all on the same team working towards the same goal, but maybe with some, some different requirements that we need things we need to look at. But that speed is important because if we can't keep up the security with the development processes and the release processes, then we all lose, right? So this needs to come together in a solution that continually learns and understands the full application context from the user to the backend code. So we call the solution traceable AI. Um, and this is really focused around bringing API and application security for cloud native applications. It does this through visibility, protection, and analytics. Visibility is around, as I mentioned, being able to see your inventory keeping it updated all the time, auto-generating the documentation in, at, a at a depth deeper than open API uh, does, uh, and keep that up to date, doing automatic risk assessments on every single API endpoint, looking at traffic, um, understanding the data flow uh, and the sensitivity of the data that's flowing through the system. Uh, so this is the visibility part because you can't protect what you don't know you have and what you don't see, right? Those shadow APIs are the ones that sting you. Protection uh, is about uh, AI first, going beyond what WAFs and RASPs can do, um, we're protecting against the OWASP web API top 10, or sorry, web top 10, and the web API top 10, or sorry, messing that up, OWASP API top 10. Different sets of attacks, um, as we talked about earlier, uh, the API attacks, uh, behave a little bit differently, even when they are similar to the uh, web top 10. So, uh, you know, an injection attack is a little bit different to, to catch and understand uh, than uh, in, in the API world than, than, uh, than the web world. So the key here is that it's AI first detection, no rules are required, nobody has to set up rules and maintain rules. That doesn't work when you have a constantly changing application where your, your attacks are, are coming new all the time, we need to be able to find and, and protect against known and unknown attacks. And then analytics, where we have a transaction data lake because we're watching and tracing everything, uh, we have the ability, this provides the ability to do threat hunting uh, for DevSecOps to have a shared explorable view of all the details of, of an incident or a situation or just normal traffic. Um, this makes great for forensics and threat hunting. It's a lot more efficient. Uh, this gives detailed information for security events and the context around them uh, and helps uh, make compliance and auditing uh, go a lot quicker. This is all built on top of our AI platform, which, uh, which uses unsupervised machine learning to really understand the context and the users. And we'll talk about this in a minute. And that is all based on top of our distributed tracing, which is our foundational technology. So distributed tracing enables us to build the full application context. And this is key to understanding the developer intent and the application uh, context and flow. It enables us to track transactions and data from user to backend and back and across all the distributed components of the application landscape, no matter who the user is, no matter what IP they come from, no matter where globally they come from, we can tie it all together. Uh, we can put together user behaviors and find sets of users that are doing a similar attack, for example. So this full application context comes from knowing four groups of things. One is the user activity. What are the clients, their roles and permissions, and what activity are they doing? The API activity, 
what APIs are being called at the edge, what are the internal API calls that are happening, what's the sequence of those calls. The data flow, what, uh, how is the data flowing? When does it leave your control? Which APIs are accessing it? Uh, when are, when are they, what data is going out to external services? And code execution, what's happening during the execution of the code? What parameters are getting used? What are the characteristics of the baseline for those, uh, for those parameters so that we can see when there's an anomaly? What do requests and response look like? What's the error and latency around this application? So distributed tracing provides all of this data, whether out of band or in line. Um, the more we have, the, the, the more powerful this is. And this wealth of data is fed into our traceable AI platform which is our security focused AI engine. With those inputs and the external inputs, we create understanding of the application, the application context. We learn about the API behavior, the user behavior, the data behavior, code behavior, API risk posture, uh, and user trust, which is kind of like a user karma thing. We can tell you when we think that there is a user, because we're a user attributed, uh, that is is uh, looking like more and more of a threat. So we watch them across everything over time. And together, these enable Traceable to better detect and protect the applications and APIs uh, that, that it's observing with capabilities like business logic attack detection, uh, unknown attack detection, ATO protection, suspicious activity flagging, et cetera, et cetera, data exposure. Um, and so there's, you know, there's a lot more here than, than I listed. Uh, and you might be thinking, okay, well, this sounds great, but where does Traceable fit among my current processes and tools? So if you consider kind of a, a very high level, uh, you know, life cycle stages, pre-prod, you know, being uh, plan, build, test is typically kind of referred to the, the dev side of DevOps. Production, um, you know, deployment and running is typically kind of the ops side of DevOps. Uh, and day-to-day -day operations, you know, day two, um, you know, where where incident response and um, you know analysis and monitoring and whatnot happen. So there are typical many different typical tools, and this is just a high-level view of that um, that can be used to to do application security, uh, you know, in this incident in this life cycle uh, in, across these different stages. And this is where Traceable fits in. Traceable fits in today. Uh, providing uh, a application API and application security platform, uh, and we continue to to grow this out. So, is this valuable across multiple teams? Uh, yes, sort of. Really, one team, right? One team, multiple needs. Right? When we talk about DevSecOps, we all have the same goal of releasing secure, uh, capable software frequently that meets our customers' needs. So. On the dev side, you know, we're, Traceable provides enhanced end-to-end -end troubleshooting and API visibility, earlier detection of vulnerabilities and use of risky APIs can help development have, uh, have an understanding of changes that they're making and when they're gonna lead to an insecure application um, and can help to prioritize which APIs need to be secured first based on that risk assessment. So th it, this is the loop back, right? We collect data about how things are performing, the risk levels, the, the threats and whatnot against the APIs, effectively the code in production. And this is the loop back that, that then helps feed the next round of developments to better secure and further secure the application. In security, right, uh, it traceable AI can be a constant guard finding and blocking threats, right? This is what the cat does, chasing everything. Always alert, automatically keeping security up with the constant change. Uh, of software. Uh, it can provide deep forensics and threat hunting ability uh, for, for the security team, catching and flagging risky and vulnerable APIs, which need to be remediated as well. So a little proactive flagging down to, to dev. And then from the operations perspective, uh, there's detailed uh, performance metrics from all of this uh, about how the app is doing all the way down to the API transaction level. So simplified compliance checking and auditing and very efficient troubleshooting and root cause analysis and forensic. So here's what some customers had to say. Uh, Greg Phillips, CTO of the next-gen real estate broker Hauser, 
uh, loves Traceable's app and API visibility and how it helps them proactively find and fix vulnerabilities. This is that dev case I talked about. And then Ralph Pine, VP of security next role, uh, is, which is a marketing and data technology company, values the deep understanding uh, that they get about how their pieces are working together, how the APIs are communicating, how their apps are working, um, that they get from the unique technology that Traceable brings. So to learn more about what Traceable AI can do for you, or to just learn more about API security, visit our website. Um, you can book a meeting. We'd love to show you a demo, talk to you more about uh, what challenges you have and how we can help. Uh, we'd love to talk to you about that. Um, you can download uh, the latest ebook on API security, uh, created in collaboration with uh, the fabulous Missilissa Knight, uh, who is around here somewhere today. And uh, there uh, was also a traceable AI workshop that happened before this session. Uh, and uh, I think, as Carl mentioned, those will be recorded and available. It's called Flying Blind early in schedule. So that's a kind of a deeper dive and a demo. Um, and please check that out uh, when the recordings are released. And with that, I would love to switch over to Q&A. And thank okay. you. Great. Thanks. Thanks, Dan. Um, boy, uh, you know, you know, you and I share um, a, a heck of a lot more in common than we have differences in terms of thinking about API security. Um, so uh, first thing, it, it, the, I think a centerpiece of the of the strategy that you emphasized um, uh, is focused on unsupervised machine learning. So mm -hmm. can you talk us through as a as, as a customer? Um, how, do, how do I how do I learn to trust uh, machine learning as a as a protection detection measure compared to the the sim rules and and that I've been used to my whole career yeah it's a great question you know I think uh, <laughs> this is the, the constant question of AI right um, as as it is used more and more um, you know I think uh, it will prove itself um, and you know I think uh, when you look at the blocking capability and the detection capability of products that use AI um, you know uh, deeply, uh, versus those that don't. Um, there's a lot of evidence there of the value that it brings. Um, we see that not just in you know security and software management, but you know across the industry, whether it's auto driving or uh, you know or, or financial services or, or whatnot. So um, you know the 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 age of of dismissing AI is obviously past us. But I hear what you're saying. I think uh, um, you know when 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 an organization finds that they're not maintaining their rules, they're not having to constantly update uh, uh, their information about what they're supposed to be looking for and so they can just get the data that they need. Um, that's going to be, you know, where the trust comes from. Mm -hmm. So in the, uh, in, in your, you have a, sort of a model of three pillars and the first pillar then of course was discovery, like, like it is for every security topic, uh, know thyself asset inventory is, is obviously the first thing that we deal with. What, what do you see as the barriers, um, to having uh, discovery and a complete inventory of APIs. Ah, yes. So a lot of um, a lot of initial um, attempts to have a good inventory and great documentation, especially documentation around APIs, has been put on the development team. Right? They're the source. They they got to come up with it. They got to make sure it's up to date. But the reality is, they're trying to get features out the door, and that slows down that process. We want them to be involved in documentation, but but what we see happening across uh, you know customer to customer and folks we talk to is development will do the work, uh, uh, but the documentation will get out of date, and that includes um, you know th that th th there's a notion of shadow APIs as well, right? APIs that got pulled in that we don't even know, so those obviously aren't going to get documented and they're not going to show up in the inventory, and those oftentimes are even the risk, right? There's there's a uh, an API vulnerability uh, that talks about uh, having you know, not maintaining your uh, your your inventory effectively properly. You may have a QA server that you know you did some testing on. It wasn't protected because you know it's QA. It was live, and now you turn you know you think you turned it off and you've gone on to production, etc. And sitting out there still is a test server that is less protected, but has those same APIs and they're vulnerable, right? So. Yep. Um, you know, so so really, the only way that you really understand what's out there is to go out there and discover and to look, and that's where you get truism from. Great, 
great. Uh, Dan, we are we are up against our our, our time. Um, uh, sincerely appreciate you joining us today. Um, and of course, Absolutely. Traceable has a has a um, uh, has a spot over in the Partners Village. If you want to connect with Dan or somebody from Traceable, um, of course. So, Dan, thank you. Uh, and. Uh